Today we're going to be learning uh, Simen Peivav, Halacha Zayin, and Ches. We'll start first with Halacha Zayin. Shachar says, If you have a egg which was laid by a Nevela or Trefa, we saw earlier that that egg is not kosher, you're not allowed to eat that egg. But what happens if the egg um, hatches into a chick, then the din is mutter, you're allowed to eat that chick. And we'll explain that in a second. Ramah says, Fiesh Armim, Hagov, Fiesh Armim, Dlohel, Aginakate, Lohatrida, Izohar. That uh, Ramah says, Some people say that you're not allowed to do this, so Lohatrida, you should avoid doing that. So the the, the Shoharach who says that you're allowed to eat the egg, that's coming from a Gemara. The Gemara says in um, Tamura, the Gemara says that when the reason why the, the chick is mutter, even though the egg is usher, is because as the egg forms into a chicken, um, it is masriach and it becomes afrabi alma. It rots and it decomposes so to the point that it's no the, the chick that grows from this egg is not considered connected to the original egg, uh, mother, the hen that it came from. And therefore, even though the mother was a nevela or trefa, the din is that the, the chick that's born from this egg is mutter, and you're allowed to eat that chick. So the Gemara says this, no disagreement. Everyone. There's no question about that in the Gemara. So the Achorim will ask on the Ramah, why did the Ramah bring such a shita that says you're not allowed to eat it? It seems beferish that you are allowed to eat it, uh, and it should be completely mother. Um, and in fact, like the Shach says, it's a mistake, and the Ramah, it's not true, and the din is not correct. What the Ramah says is not correct. What the Machabra says is a beferish of Gemara that the chicken is mother. So the Tan says that the reason why a person should be machmir, and why the Ramah is saying that a person should be machmir, is because um, the problem is like this. If uh, I know that this egg is usher, but if I let it hatch, it'll be the chick that comes from will be mother. So then, what are people going to do? They're going to take the egg and um, sit a hen on it and let it hatch because right now it's going to be garbage. So I might as well develop this into a new chicken. And therefore, that's a chashash takola, which is to say, is if I leave it around and I let this egg sit around for a while until. Um, it hatches, then potentially someone's going to eat it, not realizing that it's a trafe egg. It's not noticeable that it's a trafe egg. Somebody might eat it. And therefore, from the chashash takola, a person is not supposed to put the egg under the hen. Now, we're going to see next time, there's a, there's a question, a serious question on this sheet of the Taz. Many are going to talk about the Taz. They disagree with him for different reasons. One of those things we're going to speak about next time. Um, but for now, <coughs> he's saying is that the chicken, the chicken is really mutter. But the reason why the Ramos says not to do it is because the Ramos is concerned that if you do it, you're going to end up, um, gonna, in order to do this, you'd have to leave the egg around, and therefore to leave the egg around as a chashash takala, and therefore you shouldn't do it. So Ramosha brings a riot from this Taz to the following. He says, excuse me, the Taz talks about chashash takala. He says, put that on the side for a second. He says, but the Taz seems very happy with the fact that if not for the chashash takala, he would be okay with the person taking this egg, which he realizes is now his trave, putting it <clears throat> under a hen and letting it develop into a chicken. That, that's what the Taz is saying. That's what would have been done. He was perfectly fine with that. So Moshe says, wait a second. He's taking something that's usher, he's, and he's turning it into something that's mutter through making it inedible. But as I said, the Gemara says it becomes mutter because it's masriach and it becomes afrobi alma. And <clears throat> he's, he's turning something usher into something mutter through making it inedible. And Moshe says, the fact that the Taz is happy with that and says that you're allowed to do that is a raya that there's no, the, 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 the prohibition of bitlis l'chadchila, the aim of atlis l'chadchila, does not apply when a person is making something inedible. I'm not allowed to take something usher and dilute it into heter, but if I take usher, isher, and I do something to make it inedible, that's not a bitlis l'chadchila. He's speaking about this. The Indian, um, the, the Shiloh had spoken once about, about making soap, where we take animal fat, which is also, it's nevela, and chela, and we turn it into soap, which is inedible. And Ramosha says there's no concern of bitlis chila to do something like that. <clears throat> but that's what Ramosha says based on the shach. It's just worth noting that um, Rabbi Yaakov Emden uh, <laughs> says exactly the opposite. He explains that the reason why, the reason why the Ramosha says you're not supposed to do this, the reason why the Ramon Ardin says you're not allowed to do, um, you're not allowed to, the, the Ephraim is also, is not like the Taz. He brings riots against the Taz, as do many others. He brings riots against the Taz. He says there's no chashash takala, and it wouldn't apply in this case. He says the reason why the Ramah says he's not allowed to do it is not is because the chicken really is mutter. Like the Gemara says, the chicken is mutter, but you're not allowed to do it because of the chashash takala. That's exactly why you're not why the Ramah says not to do it is because in order to do it, you'd have to leave the chicken around, the, the egg around for however long it takes to hatch, and therefore that's what the Ramah meant to not say, which is to say, 
uh, he's saying is um, he's saying is that the reason why the, the for the Ramah is exactly what Ramah is mutter is Ramah trying to say his answer. Okay, Ramah should, but says this um, based on the Taz. Um, and that, that's how most, I think, how most people assume. Anyhow, irrespective of whether that's Shabbat and Ramah, that, but that there's no Isra bin Tilsachatim. Okay, we now turn to Halacha Ches. And that is as follows. Here we're going to talk about blood spots. Halacha Ches, Shukhran says the following. Beitz's Oif Tamek, Shehiz Chal Oifel Hizrakimba. If you have a chicken egg, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, an egg from a non-kosher bird, from an owl, she hiskel ha'oif and the and the, the egg started forming into a, into a bird. Like an alam shum sheretz oif, if you eat that, there's an iser of eating uh, sheretz oif. Um, this is a sheet of summary sharing, but it's quite a like this. Not so relevant to us, so we're not going to talk about these details. But if the if the egg starts to form, then there's an iser of sheretz oif. What happens if you have an egg from a kosher bird, like a chicken egg, and the egg started to form, and a person eats that egg as it's in the middle of forming, then it's only us and to eat that egg. Again, there's lots of uh, discussion in place can here about exactly why one is us and and one is us and not so relevant to us. But what is relevant to us is, the Shachanarach is talking about, Shachanarach is talking about an egg where it already began developing. We're going to talk about a related question, and that is blood spots. And the, as follows: If you um, go to a chicken farm and you look at eggs, you find that a very small percentage of them actually have will have a little speck of blood in the middle of the egg, primarily on the yell, on the yolk. They'll, uh, they'll have a, a speck of blood on them. Okay, and we call that a blood spot. Now, in but by the time the egg comes to my house, that I just said it when a person going to a, a farm, by the time it gets before they sell it to consumers, they go through a process called candling, which is to say is they shine a bright light through the through the egg. Um, they used to do it with the candles, that's called candling. And the bright light is so strong, it shines through the shell, and a person or a machine watching can pick out the eggs that have blood spots. They get, the blood spots show up as darker spots as it passes by, and they can pick out the ones that have the blood spots and take them out. Which is to say is that it's very uncommon that a, a consumer will see a blood spot in an egg that they buy. But it does happen. Um, it does happen in a very small amount of time. Again, blood spots in general are very rare. Uh, but even when they happen, they're usually caught by the packing house before they put them into the container. Um, but it does happen. Okay. So we saw, um, we saw previously that if an egg had been fertilized, it was a fertilized egg, and there's a blood spot. There's a chash of shodet tichel bekula. It could be that the egg is already forming, and the entire egg is already has the status of a, of a uh, chick. And therefore, um, in that case, we asked for the whole egg. And we spoke about that, and there's questions. Okay, um, that's it, that, 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 uh, tichel, tichel what happens if we have a, an egg which is not fertilized, which is commonly what we have, eggs that were never fertilized by a, a rooster, so they just came out of the egg to the hen by itself. Um, so those eggs, that is not a, there's no possibility at that point that a chug of cool. It couldn't possibly be a, a the beginnings of an egg starting to form <clears throat> that's now spreading through. There's no chick is ever going to form in this egg. So then, um, that's not where the blood comes from. The scientists believe that the, the, the blood comes as that the blood spots in unfertilized eggs come as follows. Um, it's not from the egg beginning from the chick beginning to form, but rather, as we spoke about once beforehand, when the egg comes, when the yolk comes out of the ovaries when the oak comes out of the ovaries it comes out through a narrow space in its like sac that it's sitting in the container that it's sitting in it has a narrow area that has no blood vessels in it the, the surrounding area has blood vessels in it but there's one strip that has no blood vessels in it that's called the stigma and the and the yolk comes out of its case which sort of the ovaries where it's being held through that stigma it pops out through the stigma now and that's what's supposed to happen if the if a blood vessel actually goes across the stigma, there is one growing there as it's not supposed to be, but there is a blood vessel growing, then as the yolk passes through the stigma, it will break that blood vessel and a drop of that blood could get left on the yolk. Okay, and that's how we understand, uh, how, how our scientists understand how blood spots form in eggs that are not fertilized. This is a video of ovulation. It's gonna show the egg coming out of its, um, out of where it's held in. And in the middle of it, you see the, the stigma, which is now s surrounded in red. That's the part with no blood vessels from which the 
egg is actually the yolk is actually going to come out and see how it pops out through that special area which has no no blood vessels in it were there to be a blood vessel in that area called the stigma then there would be a blood spot on the yellow of this egg as it cracked through that section and uh, left a trace on the actual egg okay now the in our, our halacha spoke about um, what happens when an egg already started to form? Literally, there's a whole egg. The chick is starting to form inside right the egg. And most of the dinim about blood spots are, are not in our simon. It, actually, they're in simon uh, samach vav. Okay, and over there, it, it starts as follows. The Gemara says like this. We start with the following point. The Gemara says in Croesus that blood that comes, the blood in an egg is not usher. The Gemara says there's a no, whole number of eggs, uh, of blood, types of blood that are, are not usher. And one of them is Dam Bayim. And Dam Bayim do not have any Isra on them. There's no Isra. There's actually no Isra. There's no Isra on them. No Isra. The Torah says that there's no Isra of eating blood if a person eats that blood. Eats that blood. Then the question is the Gemara and Chulin speaks about, as we've mentioned, that sometimes a blood spot is a concern of Shadu Techel Bakula. We start to think that the blood that's here is a sign that there's really blood that the chick is starting to form and sometimes it is ulcer, sometimes the whole egg is ulcer, sometimes it's not ulcer. So we're trying to guess, but what's going on? Is egg, blood of eggs, mother or blood of eggs ulcer? So um, there's different answers. The two main answers that Tyson brings over there are, is, one is, the Gemara in, in Croesus is saying that it's us, is saying that it's mother mid rice, it's based on the Xeris Akasa, there's no Isid Raisa. The Gemara in Hulun is telling us that there's no Isid Raisa, but there is an Isid Rabbanu. So the Gemara Chulun is, is sort of a continuation of that Gemara there. And the other shot is that the Gemara increases, it says that it's mutter, that says there's no Isra on, on blood spots, is talking about those same spots that the Gemara Chulun says are mutter. The Gemara Chulun says some are shalut techel bakula, some are not. And so the Gemara increases, when it says that there's no Isra, it means it's the ones that the Gemara Chulun already explained to us don't have an Isra on them. And as you may remember, the Ramah said we're machmer, all those shadows. But just to answer the stira, the answer to the stira is that one Gemara should go with the other one. So the 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 shukhar, we essentially were machmer for both of these sheetas, which is to say we could, we assume there's an iser on, on blood spots, and some of them we're concerned is of shalut bukula, and there might even be aser midrash. Okay, now the, the Ramah says, as I mentioned, the Ramah says that because we're not clear exactly which cases in Khulan are exactly shalut bukula, there's many different sheetas, therefore we assume that any blood spot in a fertilized in a, an egg that might have been fertilized that blood spot is a chash of shadu techel and the whole egg is awesome okay that's all that we've said so far or the past now is about fertilized eggs what happens if we know um, that the egg is not fertilized um so the shukhar says that if the if the egg is for sure not a fertilized egg then min, min hadin, the ikr hadin is that the blood spot and the whole egg is completely mutter but Midrabana, a person should not eat the, the blood itself because it's a mara sign. It looks like I'm eating blood, and blood people know that blood is also, so this looks like I'm doing something wrong. And therefore, the Shukhar says a person should um, not eat the, the blood part of it because of mara sign. Um, now, how do I know that whether the, the, this is a fertilized egg or not? How, would I, how am I supposed to figure out whether egg is or is not fertilized? So the Gemara, in a different din, din having to do with the Beya and Fuyamtiv, the Gemara says is, there's two ways to know. Either the closest rooster is 60 houses away, or the closest rooster is across of a river that he can't get across. So you know that there's no roosters here. Okay, and the, and the um, that's said not about our dinner, it's said about dinner for for Hilchas Yomtev, for Hilchas Mukta. Uh, and the place can say that those same dinner apply here also, the same rules also, it has to be 60 houses away, the rooster, or it has to be across a river. And the Ramah in, in the Torah's Chata says, another thing is, if you have the, if you keep the chickens, the, the hens in a chicken coop, and you know that in that chicken coop there were no other, there were no roosters, then you can um, assume that it's a, the eggs that come out of that chicken are non-fertilized because there was no roosters around. Okay, so in fact, for most of our eggs that we get, in fact, they meet those criteria. If you think about it, the people who sell eggs commercially, this is not a private little farm, uh, uh, someone in their backyard has some chickens. These people are selling eggs commercially. For them, um, they have no need to support roosters. They just need hens that lay eggs. The roosters actually is bad for the chickens to have them around. So they have chicken coops with thousands of chickens in them and there are no roosters to be found. So they qualify, it, it seemingly they qualify as being non-fertilized eggs. It's not um, 
Okay, and so so there's, there's, there's this added little feature here is that now in more recent years, there's something called um, biosecurity, which is to say is the government is concerned about people, uh, about diseases getting into the food that we eat and things like that. And therefore there's extra controls to make sure that nothing goes into the chicken coop that isn't supposed to. And that includes that there would be no roosters around. Um, so we, we could be pretty comfortable that there are no roosters and we have non-fertilized eggs. So now there's a, there are two points to make before I finish up on this side. And that is, um, it's not clear whether free, free range chickens, that is chickens that don't have to be dafka in the coop, um, but they could be more, they have more ability to go out and about whether those qualify for these dinner also you have to know really how the free range works and how loose it is and how you know how available are the roosters are the hens really able to get all around and then we have to think about are the roosters 60 houses away and things like that the other thing is something newer um and that is there's a company that came up with with a solution to a problem that probably most people never thought of and the problem is as follows we, we've mentioned in the past that the, the, we use specific types of chickens to lay eggs. Those are different than the chickens that we use for cooking the actual chicken itself. Well, those are called broilers. These are egg layers, and the egg layers are typically are what they call white leghorn chickens. And uh, <clears throat> so if you think about it, the people, the, the white leghorn chickens lay eggs all day long. That's all they, or every, all the time, they sit there and they lay eggs. But obviously there's somebody out there who must be breeding white leghorn chickens to grow more of them so they can have new chick new white leghorns for tomorrow to lay eggs um, so there are obviously there are farmers out there and those farmers raise hens and roosters of white leghorns in order to produce more and more white leghorns so that we, they could then spend their life laying eggs so what happens is those hens lay eggs and they lay eggs that are let allowed to hatch into the new white leghorn chickens the problem is that only half of those chicks are worth anything because we all the chicks are only there in order to lay few, more eggs no one is, no, the, the the roosters the males have no value what will anybody do with a male white leghorn chicken who needs them so they, they have a nice term for they so they call them which is say they kill them um, after they're a day or two old, they separate them, the, the males from the females, and the males are all culled, they're all killed. So that's not very um, pleasant to do, nor is it financially worthwhile to hatch a, an egg all the way. Half the eggs that you're hatching have no value, so you're sort of wasting your money and your time. So this company came up with a way of, of what, that as soon as the egg is laid, within a very short amount of time, they can tell which egg is going to turn into a male and which will turn into a female. What they do is then they take all the male eggs out so that the roosters, then the only ones that they hatch are the female white leghorn chickens, which is what they want. That's great. So they're only, they're only uh, raising the female white leghorn chickens. They're only hatching the females. What happens to the males? Well, they said, hey, instead of throwing them in the garbage, they take those eggs and they sell them to people who sell eggs to, to the consumers. Because uh, why not? They're just plain old eggs. They're perfectly fine. So. Uh, the, the, so what's going to happen is with, with this technology would mean is there will be fertilized chicken eggs out in the market. Whereas today, um, there's like basically no fertilized eggs there because they're all um, laid by chickens that are locked up in coops far away from roosters. And if this technology moves along, there may be a certain percentage of uh, fertilized eggs in the market. Right now, this has not come to market yet, uh, but something that people are working on and may one day happen. Okay, so but to summarize where we were uh, before we end off this section is that the the Shukhanar said if you have an egg that's not fertilized, which is what we have most in our kitchens, we have eggs that are, eggs that are not fertilized. If we have an egg that's not fertilized and there's a blood spot in it, min the, hadin, the, the blood is really mutter, but because of Maris Ayan, a person is not allowed to eat that egg, so you should scoop out the blood and you can eat the rest of the egg. That's what that's what the Ikra Hadin would be is. But Ramosha says is, Ramosha says, um, as do many others, that the meaning is to throw out the entire egg. Okay, even though nowadays we know it's from a non-fertilized egg, even so the meaning is that we throw out all the entire egg, just like it was in the olden days when we didn't know. In the olden days when we had an egg, that was from possibly a fertilized egg, we were not able to eat the rest of the egg. We had to throw it out. So Ramosha says that nowadays, um, even though we have non-fertilized eggs, we should do, the minute is to do the same thing and to throw it out, okay? Just, just a side little Shiloh, we once mentioned that there's such a thing as an egg that has two yolks in it. 
So the dying wise has a truth about whether if you have a blood spot in one of the yolks should be also the other yolk goes. Okay. Anyhow, so so the the now that we now we understand those parts, now let's move ahead. The Rama says that if a person um, if, if a person in order to avoid blood spots, they're not very common, but you you do have to do check the eggs to make sure that there are no blood spots. And the Rama says you should check them. It, you you need to, you must check eggs during the daytime. So I'm sorry. During the daytime, you must check the eggs. When it's not daytime, you don't have to check the eggs. Okay? So Shechta said, what does that mean? Why would I have only mitzvah during the daytime and not during the nighttime? So Shechta said, that means is that <clears throat> the ikwa din is you can assume that your your egg has no blood spot in it because it's not very common at all. You can assume there's no egg, no spot in it. But when, when it's easy to do, when it's reasonably easy to, to do it, then you it, it's we've talked about this in it's like callous to avoid to not look and therefore when it's e- reasonably easy to do it you move to do that and therefore when there were in those days when there was no uh, electric lights during the daytime it was easy to during the daytime there was plenty of light it was easy to check the eggs during the nighttime it was not they had no electric lights it was not easy to do it therefore during the daytime <clears throat> the person should check because it's easy to do it and it's right in front of you you should check it during the nighttime you're not move to check Okay, or another example, when I'm making hard boiled eggs, okay, and hard boiled egg, I'm gonna cook the egg without checking for blood spots. And, and I'm not gonna, most cases, you can't see the blood spot afterwards. So basically, I'm sort of taking my chances, and that's fine because you have to check as much as is reasonably possible. When it's not possible, like if you make a hard boiled egg, you're not more to check. Okay, so this Rama, as Rabbi Shechter explained it, has an, has an actual, has a uh, a modern application, which is nowadays we would check eggs by day and at night the same, because for us it's just as easy to check it at night as it is by day. We have electric lights, but another the nafkamina is in an egg in a liquid egg company. Liquid egg company buys eggs, they candle them to remove as many blood spots as they can, then they crack them and sell them as liquid eggs. So, in 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 a factory to have to, to insist that there be a mashkiach standing there. To check everything for blood spots, that's not considered easy. When well, the Ramos you have to check it during the daytime, meaning meaning when it's easy and simple, you should do that. So this doesn't qualify for that. And therefore, in liquid egg companies, they, they candle the eggs for their own purposes, but there's no much gear who stands there to make sure that all the eggs have no blood spots. In contrast, in a restaurant where we have a mashkir, if there's a, assuming there's a mashkir to be in the restaurant, then it's easy. The mashkir is standing there. So just one of his responsibilities can be to check the eggs. And therefore, the standard procedure is that in those places, mash, we do have to check the eggs for blood spots. But in a, in a factory that makes liquid eggs, um, there it's considered not simply or simple or reasonable, easy to do it. And therefore, you don't need to check for blood spots. Okay. Now, one last thing we need to talk, speak about is something called... Um, protein spots. And that is as follows. I mentioned to you that if you look crack eggs, you, it's not very common to find the blood spot. Every once in a while someone will find the blood spot, but it's not very common. However, if a person buys brown eggs, the, the, the claim is that, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 percent of the eggs have blood, have spots in them. Okay, it's, it's a common complaint that people have that brown eggs have, have what appears to be lots of blood spots. Uh, and the companies who sell these eggs get loads of complaints about them. Consumers call all the time saying, I bought your eggs and they were all, so many of them had blood spots in them. Okay, so at some, at a certain point, the, that, those type of complaints came to the OU because the OU was giving hashkacha on whole brown eggs. And people said, how can you give hashkacha on these eggs when so many of them have blood spots in them? Okay, so the OU Puskim went to look into this and spoke to experts in the field, uh, people who, um, work with eggs and particularly work with brown eggs and they said as follows the the white part the albumin of an egg is primarily made out of protein and um what happens is protein is trans translucent and sort of transparent also and you it has sort of no color to it well when you when but if you would look more carefully you would notice that there are certain parts of the of the white of the egg that are thicker or sort of clumping together of pieces of protein more than other parts. Now, in a white egg, in a regular white egg, you would never notice that. Maybe it seems a, seems a little bit whiter or, or thicker than other parts, but it would totally pass you by. You wouldn't pay any attention to it. But what happens with a brown egg is that when the egg, when the chicken um, forms the shell around the egg, it forms a shell and then it injects uh, uh, pigment to help give the egg its brown color to it some of that pigment leaks through the shell. 
it doesn't only stick to the outside, but leaks through into the alchemy, into the white part of the egg. And there again, you wouldn't notice it. It just gives the, the, the white part of the egg a little bit of a tinge of a color to it. You wouldn't notice that either. But in these clumps, where protein is a little thicker and more concentrated, in those clumps, the, the pigment collects and becomes concentrated and gives a darker, dark color to it. And that's what people are seeing when they open up an egg, which is to say is that what people are seeing there are these clumps of protein, but because the egg is a brown egg and it, collects, it, it attracts the pigment, that is more noticeable. And if you look at it more carefully, you'll see, you see that those spots, they're not red. On a regular egg, the blood spots, the blood spots on an egg look like blood, they're red. On these, in the brown eggs, they don't look red, they look brown. In other words, they're a concentrated version of the color of the egg's shell. Furthermore, in an egg, in a regular egg, when you find the blood spot, the, the spot that you find looks like a spot. It looks like, think of what would happen if there was a drop of blood fell in. It would be roundish or sort of round, then it would look sort of like a drop of blood. What would happen if a drop fell into this thing over here? As opposed to these spots tend to be more like square shaped or, or like dandruff, look like a piece of dandruff and they may not have they won't be symmetrical they may have jagged edges because they're really just a clump of protein they're not uh excuse me they're not blood at all so um Rybelsky said <clears throat> therefore if a person looks at it and they can tell that it's not blood it, when you look now that you've heard that if you look at it you look more carefully you see that it's brownish and it's not round and it doesn't look like a regular blood spot then it's mutter and there's nothing wrong with eating those um Especially when we re remember that, that even blood spots are only awesome in Shomar's eye because they look like blood. Well, these don't look like blood, especially once you know the information. They don't look like blood, and therefore they're more the Shechter wasn't so convinced. He was a little concerned that, um, that there's this little chance of it being something called a meat spot. That's something very different. But also, he said, as well, there's a minute. And the minute is to not eat these kind of blood spots. Most housewives and most people open up an egg who hadn't heard what I just said for the past three minutes would open up the egg and say, hey, that's a blood spot. In fact, that's why people complain. So he thinks that that should be potentially included in the minute. Uh, and Buskey said, no, it's a minute but the, the, the minute is that blood spots, we don't eat the blood, and we don't eat the whole egg, as we mentioned. Um, to extend it to this kind of thing, it's just a mistake. The people saw something that looked like a spot, but it wasn't a blood spot, it was a brown brown spot, and he thought that it should be motor. Um, regardless of whether you think it should be motor, also they thought that when, in fact, if there's hashkoch on it, then some kind of a notification has to be given or some kind of a report someplace that says that consumers should realize that, that the hashkoch is being granted and that those spots are not regular blood spots.